Model steam engines for beginners part 24. Removing lime scale deposits from within a small steam engine boiler using a commercial descaler. Recently I bought this steam engine. I've already made a video about it. I have a series called In My Steam Engine Playroom. I featured this engine in one of the episodes and because of the type of water gauge fitted to this engine where you can actually see what's inside the boiler I did notice that there was a lot of lime scale in the boiler. So much in fact when I opened the drain valve when the boiler was cold after removing the safety valve no water came out. In my main workshop I have a box full of old syringes like this and they're very useful. This has a piece of silicone rubber pipe on the end and I'm having to use this syringe to remove the water from the boiler. I transferred the water from the syringe into a plastic bottle and you can really see how cloudy the water is. Lime scale is a big problem in boilers. It's bad enough in small ones like this but it's even worse but it can be much worse in a locomotive type boiler because if the lime scale blocks the gap between the sides of the firebox and the sides of the boiler then you can get localised overheating and you definitely do not want that to happen. A while ago I rebuilt a small Mamod traction engine and the boiler was definitely scrap so I cut it in half using my bandsaw. Here's a clip from the video and it's quite surprising. I was curious to see how much lime scale had accumulated in this Mamod over the years so it was over to the bandsaw to saw the boiler in half. And this is what I found inside the boiler Really strange, all the lime scale is at the top of the boiler and there's hardly any at the bottom. I would have thought it would be the other way around. I wonder if I'm correct in my assumption that lime scale forms when there's a mixture of air and water. I assume that this small boiler must have been partially full of water all of the time. Time for a health and safety warning. The kettle descaler that I'm about to show contains formic acid and if used incorrectly can be dangerous and become a serious hazard to your health. Read the instructions on the reverse of the bottle before use. You have been warned. Here's a kettle descaler that I normally use and I also use it in my acid bath for cleaning pieces of copper pipe. The front of the bottle shows other applications. You don't use it neat, in fact you water it down considerably. There are many warnings on the reverse of the bottle. It says important wear rubber gloves but I'm not going to do that. I have a different method. My choice is not to actually touch the kettle descaler with my hands. I never wear gloves in the workshop. I like to know where my fingers are at all times. I feel that I must mention that I am wearing eye protection. This is very important. You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes. On the side of the bottle is a list of things you can use this stuff with. Even though it doesn't say anything on the bottle about descaling model steam boilers, it's pretty much like a kettle, so I'll follow that direction. If you need further information about this really good Kill Rock K stuff, please visit the website. Here's the address on screen. And one more time to avoid confusion and stupid messages from a man called Andrew, I have no arrangement with this company, no sponsorship deal or anything like that. I bought this bottle of Kill Rock K via Amazon. Oh yes, and I don't have any financial arrangement with Amazon either. I just click on the button that says buy and I buy the product. A few do's and don'ts. This is the burner and I've removed it because I do not want to heat the boiler whilst this stuff is inside it. Here I'm using my syringe with a piece of silicone rubber tubing on it to withdraw sufficient Kilrock K from the bottle to descale the inside of the boiler. I'm possibly taking a bit too much but it will be okay. I'm being very careful not to splash this stuff about and here to prevent that from happening I'm emptying the contents of the syringe into the boiler using the funnel. A short while before I made this video I made a cup of tea so the water in the kettle from the kitchen is still hot. And as an extra bonus in this episode I'm also going to descale my kettle. What I'm doing here is pouring the hot water into the boiler using the funnel. To speed this process up I've edited the video. In this clip you can see just how much lime scale is around my kettle. I live near York in the UK and this is what the water supply from this area does to my kettle. And thinking about it some of my other steam boilers possibly need descaling by now. I'm going to fill this boiler right to the top. 
because I'm assuming, just like the old Mammod boiler, that the lime scale will be also on the underside of the top of the boiler. I removed the pressure gauge, or manometer as they call it. Because of the acid attacking the lime scale, the gas has given off made a bubble. Very soon the boiler was full right to the top. I thought this is a good time to descale my kettle. There was lime scale everywhere on this kettle, even around the rim where the lid fits. Using the syringe, I applied some there first, which eventually ran into the main kettle. This is the filter that fits on the spout. Look at the state of it. I boiled the water in the kettle and then topped it up right to the top with hot water and left it. And whilst I was doing this, the Kilrock K had done its stuff in the boiler of the steam engine. Now when I open the drain tap, the water does actually pour out. I let the water run out into a plastic bottle. And surprisingly, unlike before, the liquid in the bottle is completely clear because the lime scale is actually dissolved in a solution. To speed up the job and make sure I got rid of all the liquid from inside the boiler, I used the syringe, and here I'm refilling the boiler with clean spring water. Do not, under any circumstances, fill your boiler with the Kilrock KM water mixture and then put a burner underneath it. That is really asking for trouble. And you certainly must not fit the safety valve. The boiler needs to be vented to atmosphere. While the solid fuel tablets are heating the water, I thought I'd have a look inside the manometer. And it looks all right, but I think the damage is possibly inside the board on tube. This is a very thin tube. How does it work? Well, it's very simple. The pressure of the steam tries to straighten out the tube, which is connected to the pointer. This clip shows that the water is starting to boil. And at this stage, I haven't fitted the safety valve. I thought it would give the water a chance to boil and check that it wasn't going to prime. Priming is when water comes out of the boiler, a bit like a fountain. Thankfully, it seemed to be OK. And here, I'm refitting the two screws that hold the cover in place on the manometer. At this stage, I wasn't sure whether it was going to work, but I was pleasantly surprised. Ideally, the needle should hit the red line when maximum pressure is reached. These solid fuel pellets don't last very long. Here, I'm adding three more and lighting them. To avoid confusion, I would just like to mention that the burner is sat on an empty mammoth box. It does not contain any of the fuel pellets. The last of the pellets are in the burner. Once I replaced the safety valve, pressure was raised fairly quickly and the needle on the manometer started to rise, but it only went to where it went before I took it apart. So that was a waste of time. I think I'll live with it. It's not important. A pressure gauge on an engine like this that runs on such low pressure is not really necessary. I noticed an immediate difference in the way the engine ran and also an immediate difference in the colour of the exhaust. Previously, when I ran this steam plant, the water was bubbling very vigorously, as can be seen here. But now it's hardly bubbling at all, so there's a big improvement and the engine sounds better and the exhaust is still quite clean. It was definitely worth doing this. It didn't take long at all and to finish the process, I'm actually blowing down the boiler. Before all the pressure goes, I tip the steam plant to get the last bit of water out of the boiler. And that is it. Kilrock K is really good stuff. As I mentioned earlier, I use it in my acid bath. It's worth having a look on the website. I didn't realise they did quite so many products. Once again, this is definitely not sponsorship. I always recommend to viewers things that I find to be good. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.